Hi guys, welcome back to another Hugh Jeffries video. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to revive the iPhone's true tone screen function without its original display. For this video, I'm going to be using my iPhone 8, which I previously restored, but due to a screen replacement, is missing the true tone feature. If you're not aware, changing the display or front camera on the iPhone 7 and later disables the true tone color feature, which automatically adjusts color temperature based on the light in a room. But there's a workaround that most repair shops don't do. So let's repair my iPhone 8 properly. However, if the front camera has been changed, there is currently no way of reprogramming it, so you won't be able to get true tone back. You can check this in 3U tools. To repair this, you'll need a programmer such as a JC Pro 1000S, which happens to be the device I'm using in this video. Along with that, I'm going to also be replacing the vibrate motor or Taptic engine, which is having some trouble. You can see here in settings under display and brightness, there's absolutely no signs of a true tone function. And same goes with the control center uh, widget as well. Comparing it to another iPhone like an iPhone 10, you can see where the true tone setting should be. Now I don't have the original display for this iPhone as when I purchased it, it already had a replacement screen on it. Now to fix this, you're going to need a reprogrammer, like I said. Now I picked up this one from JC. It's called the JC Pro 1000S. I also got a few other parts from JC, which I'll feature in some upcoming videos. But in this video, I'm going to be mainly focusing on the JC Pro. This thing is a NAND reprogrammer. It can reprogram displays, Taptic engines, batteries, pretty much everything to do with an iPhone. In fact, it even takes an iPhone battery to run. Uh, you insert an iPhone 6 battery in the back of it and it charges up with USB-C. Unfortunately, the device itself doesn't come with any modules, so you have to purchase those separately. This one on top is for the display and Taptic engine and cost me 60 Australian dollars. The one underneath it is a battery reprogrammer and that one cost me $90. So this thing sets you back a few hundred dollars, which uh, it sounds like a lot, but if you're doing a lot of iPhone repairs, it's definitely worth it. Now to get this repair started, you'll need to connect the iPhone to a Windows-based computer running 3U tools, which is a free application that you can download. Going into the verification report, you can grab the screen serial number, which is this really long bunch of numbers and letters. You need to copy that and then head over to the device details and you'll need to copy the cover board number as well. You can also see that there is a vibrate number. So if you need to repair your Taptic engine, you can copy that number there. With those copied into a text document, it's time to disassemble the iPhone and fix this screen issue. Now I have already removed the screws and loosened up the screen as one of the screws actually wouldn't come out and I had a little bit of trouble removing it. Nevertheless, I can now remove the cover plate for the battery connector and screen, as well as the cover for the front facing camera. Disconnecting all of those flex cables, I can remove the LCD screen. Coming across to the JC Pro, I can power it up and get this process started. Now, if you don't want to spend the money on a JC Pro 1000S, you can get the JC V1, which only costs about $60 and does the same thing just only for the screens and Taptic engines. It doesn't have the additional functions of the JC Pro. Now I'll need to copy these numbers that I wrote down from 3Utils and punch them into the JC Pro. The first one, LCM, is the screen serial number, which I can enter first. And in that second box, MTSN, you can insert the cover board number. There is actually an app that goes on the computer that can do this for you. However, I was unable to make an account, so I did it the harder way. You can burn the information onto the LCD screen, so we can now test it and make sure that the screen function has been restored and we have working True Tone. Going into settings and display and brightness, you can see it didn't work. Now, the reason for this was I forgot to hit one of the little checkboxes. It is completely unmarked and it took me about 20 minutes to figure this out. But once you check it and burn the screen serial numbers again, press read and confirm that the serial numbers have burned into the screen. And then with a restart to the iPhone, you can see the true tone function is now in settings. Now, if you do have the original screen that shipped with the device, all you need to do is attach it up, click on read, check the box, swap the display over to the new one, and then press burn. 
but obviously I didn't have the original screen, so the process was a little bit more complex. Now I'll move across to working on the Taptic engine, as it is no longer working. Now, you'd think this would be somewhat of an easy job, however, I ran into some difficulties and this programmer is yet again going to come into use. Now, after removing the Taptic Engine, I'll need to remove the little antenna thing that's connected up to the connector. I did damage the old one, but it wasn't working anyway. Installing the new one and plugging it in, I can connect up a test display and then I can test the functionality of the new Taptic Engine in the iPhone. As you can see, something clearly isn't right. The home button feedback works perfectly, but when it comes to phone calls and vibrations, it will only vibrate once at an extreme intensity. Now I did plug it into my JC Pro to see if I could reprogram it and calibrate it to the iPhone itself. However, it wasn't detected, so I'm not sure whether it's a knockoff or it's just faulty. However, I'm going to be testing this out though because I posted this on Twitter and various people said that sometimes uh, it can happen. They're not really sure why it happens, what causes it, but it's happened to a lot of people. So I'm going to be trying this out by opening up an iPhone 8, taking its Taptic Engine and putting it in, seeing if that works and then reprogramming it back to what the original serial number would have been. This iPhone 8 has never been opened. It is basically a uh, mint condition. It has a dead screen, so not sure why the screen is dead, but it's out of warranty and I can't get it fixed anyway because it's from the United States and they would uh, not actually service this under warranty anyway. So I'm going to open it up, take out the Taptic Engine and give it a test. So with the Taptic Engine removed, I decided without reprogramming it, just connect it to the phone. And to my surprise, it worked perfectly. So maybe the new vibrate motor I purchased was just faulty. However, I'm going to reprogram it just to be sure that everything will always work with this phone, even if it is updated. So I programmed the new Taptic Engine with the old Taptic Engine's serial number, which can also be found in 3U tools. With it programmed correctly, I can reinstall it into the iPhone and screw its screws back in, making sure to connect up the little antenna that goes to the dock connector. I also cleaned various components with some cleaning alcohol as there was still a little bit of dust from when I did the restoration video. Installing the last few remaining screws, I can then install the last bracket for this area of the phone. And then I can clean up the edges. Um, and a good tip for that is actually just roll around uh, it with your spudger. It sort of collects it very nice and easy. Or if it comes off in one big bit, that's even better. Some more cleaning is to come next to remove any of that dust that I missed out on when I did the restoration video. Now that everything's nice and clean, I can install the new water resistant seal back into the iPhone 8. It's important to push it down with a spudger. This just helps it adhere to the actual phone's frame and makes the removal process of the protective blue film much more easy. I like to gradually remove it uh, using a spudger to continually press down, making sure it doesn't lift away from the frame. With everything prepped and ready to go, I can connect up the display. Uh, I like to start with the front facing camera first as it's the hardest to connect. Lastly, I can connect the battery and give it one last test. After that quick test, I can install the remaining two brackets one for the LCD and battery cover, and one for that front facing camera. Next, I'll need to remove the stuck screw, uh, which I mentioned before. Once I got that out, I could give the screen side of things a bit of a clean, um, and then everything was ready to be sealed up. Lastly, I'll need to merge the two halves together by pressing it in at the top, and then the bottom, and finally working in the sides. And we're done. So this is how to retrieve the true tone display function with or without the original display, and also how to reprogram the Taptic Engine to ensure it's working properly. From what I can tell, Apple is currently locking home buttons, face ID sensors, screens, batteries, and even vibration motors to each iPhone to further hinder repairs, with some functions disabling on the phone after these components are replaced. Reprogramming individual components shouldn't be necessary to repair your expensive phone that you've already spent your hard-earned money on, but unfortunately, this is the way the world is heading. 
unrepairable products that aren't meant to last. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out my repair playlist for more videos just like this one. Also, make sure to follow me on my social media, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.